Thank you very much, Brother Jose. Good evening, friends. Praise the Lord. Very happy to be here tonight with you to serve the Lord. I'm sorry to disappoint last night. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was here, but there's a little something come up that they, something about their churches that if I spoke over there, I was, I, if I was going to speak here, then they wouldn't let me speak there. So I, I want to be at least my word good, and so I, I promised to come here, so I... I come, and I, I'm happy that to be here and pray that God will help us now and give us two nice nights of service while we're here. And uh, just a little tired. We just come out of a meeting down in Florida, and that's I think that's our sixth week. We've just constantly been in services, so I'm really good and tired. We drove, I think, 1,100 miles one night in a little old Chevrolet truck, <laughs> Billy and I, so we about 23 hours of doing it. <laughs> I was on both sides <laughs> this way, and uh, we had a good time doing it. Always come right straight home and then right on up here. And uh, last night I was very tired. We got in a little late. I was here about seven something. And we come over to the meeting, and then I heard that there was something gone wrong about some denominations and so forth. I am. Thank you much. I that's from my heart. I I if we're interdenomination we've got to be that. That's for all denominations, no matter what the heart is. We can't be interdenomination, just be to this certain church or this certain, it's for everyone. And I believe in the Father of God and the brotherhood of man, and I, I think that we're brothers together, and that's the way we should be. And God has His children; they're all out. Maybe some of them a little odd to our belief, or your belief, or mine. But God's accepting His children, so we have to accept Him as our brothers and sisters, don't we? <laughs> that's right. And I, to this little, this church here, the Philadelphian Church. Thank you, Brother Jose. When I was in Sweden. I could not have been treated any nicer in my life, and I was treated with the Swedish people in Sweden. They were very lovely and kind to me. And everywhere I've been, I've always been treated real nice by all different people. So, therefore, I, I don't have any denomination. <laughs> I, I've said I've been with the Branham family now over 40 years, and they never asked me to join their family. I just... <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was just born to Branham. <laughs> I think that's why we're Christians, don't you think? So just, we're just born Christians. Now we, some of them, now I have nothing against the denominational churches. That's, they're up to what they, uh, whatever they want to believe. But I don't think we should separate brotherhood. You see, man, I think we should all love the Lord and serve him. And I, in my life, I've tried to be this, around me. If I can't feel a loving feeling of the Spirit of God around me, then there's something wrong here. I, I've got to, I don't want to get mixed up in anything so that lovely, sweet feeling uh, is gone from me. See, I, I want that to be there all the time because that's what I help God's people with. You see, is, and then you've been in the presence of people that you couldn't hardly stand to be in the presence, I guess, and uh, maybe cursing and going on. Well, that, that's just. Just the people may be all right, but they're just anointed with that type of spirit, you see. And I, I like that kind that's friendly and nice and polite and yes. brotherly and yes. loving, and I just kind of like that. I, that's my way of believing it. And I was just thinking, we are God's uh, fruit bearers. And I believe in St. John, the 17th chapter, Jesus said, Ye are uh, the branches, and he was the vine. Now, the vine puts forth the fruit, but the branches have to bear the fruit. Right. So the, if the branch is getting its life out of the vine, well, it's the same kind of life that's in the vine. Don't you think so? Sure. It has to be. Now, our hands and our lips and our eyes, and God's hands, lips, and eyes that we have here, he has on earth. Now, he's gone back to God and sends forth his energy of his spirit 
to anoint us with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And then if we are submissive to him, and then our hands represents his hands. That's the reason he said, they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. And on receiving the Holy Spirit, the apostles laid their hands on. There was something happened. Simon the sorcerer realized that there was something taking place when Peter laid his hands on the people and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, it's uh, God's gift. Now, it's something. Now, anyone who ever... How many of you mothers, what mother here doesn't know what laying on of hands means? When the little baby's fretting and crying and everything, let that mother's hand just touch that baby. That settles it. The little fellow starts, stops crying, hovers up to its mother. See? It's laying your hand. It's mother. It's a contact. How many of you here ever had a, a horse that was real nervous and upset? Just let a man who likes horses just pat him, say, talk to him just a minute, pat him, lay his hand on him. First thing you know, the horse is quietened down. See? It's, and so is it with laying hands on the sick. If we are anointed to do so from God, our hands represent God's hands. That's the only hands he has is ours. And we pray for the sick. Now, the first thing for the doctor, he, he is many times, the doctors are anointed with the Holy Spirit, and they pray for their patients. And sometimes the doctor, in his line of education, and he studied science and great moves, which has helped us in many ways, our hospitals and things, and the doctor, he goes in, and they have a, a glass, an x-ray. They can look through and see a, a lumps of, and different things that's wrong, broken bones. Well, now, how contrary that is to what uh, science used to be. They said there was no light except sunlight. The Bible said our whole body is full of light. Well, the x-ray proves that, see. That is not it's our body light, and it shows a shadow, and how they see it's the x-ray. Now, if the doctor can feel something and he can cut out something that some of his five senses will contact, well, then he can... I've got some pretty smart doctors today and some fine hospitals and fine drugs, and we're very thankful to Almighty God that we have them. I'm grateful. And they do all that they can, but sometimes it gets beyond them. Right. Sometimes they can't do it. And then we are, have a perfect right if ever human element has failed, we still have a right to come to God and ask God to help us. That's right. And he does it. He promised he would. Now, the doctor does not claim to be a healer. He doesn't claim to heal anyone. He only claims that he assists nature. God is the healer. Now, if you broke your arm, the doctor could set the arm, but the doctor can't heal the arm, see? The doctor only sets the bone. God, what nature, what they call it, which is God, if we want to break it down and heals the bone. The doctor might move a tooth. It's bad. Well, now, he doesn't heal the socket. He only move, removes the tooth. He removes a bad appendix, but God does the healing. See, the medicine keeps clean while God builds tissue. God is the only creator there is. Isn't that right? And he creates the cells and so forth that builds the place. So now, wouldn't it be nice if our just, if the whole world, of course, but if all of the world could work together as a brotherhood in harmony with God, medical science, and, and, and all different denominations of churches, and, and all races and colors of people, if, if we could just break that thing down out of our mind and know that we all come from one person, that's right. Adam and, Eve, that's right. and then we and remember, some brother may be fallen, but don't make him any worse. And, why, help him up and try to get him back to the brotherhood again, the brotherhood of God. That, my Christian friends, has been my vision of what the world needs today, That's right. is, is back to God. Right. Now, doing my very best, I, I, <laughs> and I intended to keep on, yeah. to do all that I know how to bring man back to God and bring a brotherhood and a feeling of Christ among the people. Now, being that I'm speaking to Pentecostal people, a greater group of you, and my last meeting where I just left was sponsored by uh, Baptist people in Florida. And so uh, we have services for all different denominations, all different peoples. And so 
There's many times that we have put emphasis too much on, I think, of one certain thing. Right. We have put too much emphasis, if you'll excuse me, because just a group of us here tonight, and I feel very much at home in this pulpit, and I'm very welcome, and I know, and I love you, and that's why I say those things. Uh, we have tucked too much, uh, put too much emphasis on our emotions. We, uh, perhaps maybe we feel that as long as we are shouting and praising the Lord, that's very fine. I, I think that's good. Or maybe because that we have power maybe to uh, speak with other languages, uh, that's, uh, that's just it. But if this Philadelphian church will just receive me as God's servant, let me... You, would you like to know what I think is the greatest need of the church today? Would you like what I think, where I think the lacking is, is a no soul travail. Yeah. The people are not broke up enough. They're, they're, there's no burden, seemingly. And you give me someone that's just so tore up about lost souls that they just cry and are, are wanting a revival so bad so they can hardly eat, just simply can't. If you read the history of the world and the religious history, you'll find out it always taken that kind of a spirit to bring a revival. That's right. See, when Zion travailed or traveled, I think is a better word, well, the, then she brought forth children. See, you, you have to be tore up. It's the atmosphere of anything. You get around where there's arguments, you get into that type of atmosphere. If there's something in the church, someone who's disobedient and very ugly, acting in the church and causing trouble, you'll never be able to have a revival as long as that kind of an atmosphere is around. And um, so uh, you have to have everybody. If you'll notice, when the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, they were all in one place and in one accord. Is that right? <laughs> Waiting for a promise. And when we get like that, uh, Brother Bose, the revival will be here then. And that, that's right. And Today we're having many great attractive meetings, protractive we call it down in the South, you know, and it's uh, just a, a word they use for, instead of revival, but I think it has become just a protractive meeting, <laughs> that's right, instead of revival, for we do not have a revival in the, in the nation as yet, as I see. I don't see any, if we have a revival like they did the Welsh revival, or in Scotland, or some of those revivals in the days of Wesley when they had the great breaking up in a a world revival come to John Wesley, and that's when I think we have a real revival. Now, I've noticed in my ministry recently that there is the people will spirit fill people, but yet they'll watch what God will do, and signs or something that he'll perform, and the people will sit and say, well, that's very fine. And you'll notice God will do something else, and they'll say, that's very nice. We appreciate that. God, good man. See? Just kind of, well, it was your duty, God. You did it just as a duty. But now, if there really was a revival in the air, when one of those things would take place, every soul would grasp it quickly, and it would be, oh my, there would be no end to it. It would just go from one to another, from one to another, and it would just keep moving. Now, of course, you know, I'm an an American like you are, but in Africa, down in the, where they were supposed to be a heathen land, it kind of would make us feel ashamed of ourselves to see how they received the gospel. Right. When they seen one supernatural thing perform, 30,000 received Christ as personal yeah. Savior at one time. That was heathen, see, 30,000. There was no question. It was just over. That was all. See. And now I... I just tell you, I think our people has relied too much on education, theology, and so forth, and has let it take the Spirit's place. Now, let me drop this just to you. I believe it's Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, I'm pretty sure. I may be wrong. I don't know. I'm quite sure it's Ezekiel 9. When the Holy Spirit went forth from, first it was man went forth from the hind gates with slaughtering weapons to destroy. That was, of course, in the, the scripturally rightly applied was just before the destruction of Jerusalem. And there was a man came forth with a white robe and an ink horn at his side. And the commission was given to him by God to go through the city. Now, just listen to this. 
and set a mark upon the forehead, the sealing of the Holy Spirit, a mark upon the forehead of every man or woman that sighed and cried for the abominations did in the city. Now, I want to just ask you, if he was coming through Chicago tonight, how many places would he find tonight that their home, their laying, just sobbing for a revival, just in such travel of soul that they just can't stand it any longer? They just don't know what to do. I wonder how many he would mark in Chicago tonight, see, of this city of almost five million people. In it. How many? Where, what would he mark? Just I imagine you could count them on your fingers, Harley. Don't you think so? It's, the people of that type of burden, but yet that was exactly, he wasn't to mark no one but that type of people. See what I mean? we got to get mellowed up before God. Now, the Lord bless you. I want to read some of his word here. My word, just like any other man, it, it fails, but his word will not fail. And now, I believe tomorrow morning I have to have speak at Sunday school. I think that's right at 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock tomorrow. And uh, then I wonder if, if uh, let's see, then I think tomorrow night, again at 7.30 at the same time, 7 o'clock. Now, bring out your sick and your afflicted, and let's get together and pray real hard, and uh, I know God will do something for us. And now, I, I suppose this is my... As far as I know, at the present time, my last meeting before going overseas. So I am certainly soliciting the prayer of you dear, fine people here in Chicago to pray for me. I'm going to need it worse than ever I did. See? And I am trusting that God will, will do great things for us overseas. And I'm, I'm sure he will. And I, it, you don't know how good it feels when you're standing and you know that you're challenged face to face with opposition. And back through my mind, I think, well, now there were so many people attended the Chicago meeting. Many of them said there's some of them praying. Now there's bound to be some there in Chicago praying. There's some praying out of Miami. There's some praying out of Palm Beach. There's some praying out of here or there. And put all of them together. I know then I'm just covered around by prayer, and that just makes you feel real, real strong. I tell you, you kind of say, "Now, Satan, looky here." <laughs> There's just prayer all around me, see, and and I I know our, our standing. Would you did you ever think that inside of our body is another man? Did you know that that there's another man inside of our body, and that's the spirit man. Did you ever think of that, Brother Ryan, to see what? Is there? That, how this in here, the inside man. Now, this inside man, if, it's, if it is of God, it's the Spirit of God. Is that right? That's inside our being. Now, my finger could not move without something making it move. It works from an intelligent here that the mind subconsciously, just maybe if I happen to think or reach over here, I don't have to think about it. It just looks like, now, there's where faith lays. Now, to you people here that's really sick, I want you to get this before I read the scriptures now to go with it. Now, just since last night and everything, I just kind of got myself let down a little, and I, I, want to, I want to explain this to you. There is a, a conscious and a subconscious. It's just like a, a, we start overseas and uh, by a ship, and there's a man sitting up here. He's the one who gives the, the orders. The man goes down in the ship to run the ship down here. Well, he don't see where he's going, but he just takes orders from up above. Well, now, he says, stir to the left or to the right or give this engine more and that or whatever it is. He just works by orders. But way down in the midst of us here in our heart is the subconscious, and it takes orders from up here. Well, now, you've heard me on the platform many times, no doubt. I was just hearing a tape from from the Owensboro meeting the other day about a person who was, was crippled, was healed, and, I, and how it was speaking, how the Holy Spirit speaking. Now, up here, this conscience comes up to the platform, Brother Branham, praise the Lord, I have faith. But right down there in that other little conscience said, now you know you haven't. <laughs> well, now, if
if you can get this one and that one in harmony with that one, that, that, you see, if this one's saying yes all the time. This one's saying yes, but way down in there, there's something that little fella just, see, you, you want to make it, you want to say yes, but it's just down there, that little shadow. That may, if you don't, don't deal with this little fellow down here very much, well, you'll find out he just kind of does the ruling, you see. So if this fellow, after all, he's the one who drives the ship. <laughs> see? He's the one who does the steering. This fellow might say, well, but this is the guy who does the work down here, see? see. So this one might hear say, oh, yes, I believe that. Oh, sure I do. Well, if, that is, if that's right, this is going to, this and this agrees with that, and we've got it. See, and then it'll it'll have to work. But until that does it, well, it just won't work. That's all. Because you got orders going this way and this and going this way, and you're just pulling your ship one way. And you don't get out of harbor. You see, you're still out here. And so we just got to get those fellows to agree and saying, God is right. This says God is right. This says God is right. And we move forward. You see, we got orders and everything. There's nothing in your way. There's nothing to make you doubt it. All the symptoms you could have. You might go back to the hospital in the morning and say, well, your arm is still stiff, your cancer is still there. You, that wouldn't have one speck of... That wouldn't phase you then. Hmm? If that, this, and this is agreed. See? That's right. Faith does anything. Now, in you is God. You who have the Holy Ghost. God is in you. You believe that? Yes. And now, Jesus said, I'll give you power. Let me show you the weakness of the church by God's grace. I give you power over unclean spirits. You will cast them out. Not I will, you will. You will cast in my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They take up serpents or drink deadly things that will not harm them. We think of the great Saint Paul. One time landed on a certain island, the ship was wrecked. God had promised him that he was going to make a certain destination. He was going back to Rome and to stand before Caesar and he believed God. So he was helping the man, he had chains around him, a prisoner, and he was helping the man throw some wood in the fire. And when he throwed some wood down, a great deadly beast, serpent, bit him right through the hand. And that beast was so deadly, till if it bit a person, they usually dropped dead within a minute or two. And so the native said, that man said, look, he's chains on him, he's a prisoner, he must be a murderer, because he's certainly, uh, the, he might escape the storm, but he's just not going to escape that, this serpent, and he's going to die. Now look. A moment, Paul looked and seen it, this, this, and that all agreed. There's not a speck of fear. He said, they said, take up serpents, they'll not harm them. He looked at that deathly bite, no fear. If you fear, then, then Satan steps in, Satan's fear. But perfect love casts out all fear. There you are. I'm God's man. There hangs a serpent, but there's not one speck of fear here, here, or there. See, it's all in harmony. He looked at the thing, he thought, well, well, shuck it off the fire. One over, he got some more sticks, and he had to put them on. Why, well, you say, Paul, aren't you afraid you uh, fall dead? <laughs> well, certainly not. <laughs> Can't fall dead. The Holy Spirit's in me. Now, the very Holy Spirit that made the heavens and earth had that man so charged with his power so that death in that, that fang of that serpent wouldn't even go into his body because his whole body was full of spirit as same as it's full of blood. See? And uh, <clears throat> is that right? Yeah. And, Every little cell of blood is alive. And there you are all charged, full of the Holy Ghost. Why, well, certainly, they walked on water. they done great miracles and so forth. Why? They were so perfectly in harmony with God, that first church. And Christian friends, until we can get back to that. Now, you, we can't argue and quarrel and fuss with denominations and ever get to it. Denominations won't bring us to it. It's a perfect love and confidence in God. That's what brings me. There you see. And you, and we may, we may shout. We may speak with tongues. We may, we may do, be great teachers of theology. We may have deities hang on to us, but it'll never work until that, this, and this comes in harmony. See? That makes them like that light. You take the the one wire off, negative or positive. It certainly won't work. <laughs> It's, it's got to have the ground, it's got to be grounded, good, and it's got to have the right type of wire and everything, and it'll pack the current. That's all it needs. But if we're really grounded in Christ, see, with the Holy Ghost in us and rooted and grounded in the faith of God, it'll certainly pack the light of the gospel to the world. It'll heal the sick. It'll do great work. Lord bless you, Christians.
and may you just receive his blessing. Now, in Numbers, uh, uh, I'm past time to start the prayer line, <laughs> but I want to read this scripture. In Numbers, the 21st chapter, it just come on my heart so much a while ago, so I, I just thought I would read it. It's very familiar to the Moses and the children of Israel, and I trust that God will bless his word now as we go in to read. And as I read it, now keep these things on mind, what I told you. Keep them on mind, see, that if you, Jesus passed by a tree, he looked on it, there's no fruit on it, and he said, no man eat off that is from henceforth. Went on up to Jerusalem, of course, they was fussing at him up there, and he couldn't stand that, that was the wrong kind of atmosphere for him, so he moved out, went on back down, come off the mountain the next morning, and as they passed by, about 11 o'clock in the day, I suppose, Peter looked at that tree and said, say, notice that you just said that yesterday, and that tree is dead from the root. See? It dried up. Why, Jesus said, have faith in God. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. For verily, verily, I say unto you, if you, not if I, if you, <laughs> shall say unto this mountain, be moved and don't doubt it, it will obey you. It'd have to. It'd have to do just what you said. If you didn't doubt it, uh, you believe it up here. Now, let's get this subconscious yes. believing it. See? And when the subconscious and this conscience in harmony with God, then it'll happen. Now, in Numbers, the 21st chapter, the 5th verse, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For, for there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our souls lost this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the... The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against thee and against the Lord. Uh, just a moment. Against thee and the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpents from among us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten... When he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent out of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he had beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel uh, set forward and pitched in. Now, I have my Bible so marked up with pencil marks and things where I've been reading, I, I missed my place coming down where it was at on that. I'm sorry. But may the Lord add his blessings now to his word. When there was a trouble, uh, God has always been the God to meet the need when there is a need for his people. And you know that. And God promised that he would supply their need. Now, when they had, yet they had did wrong, and they had sinned and done things was wrong, yet when they had need of healing... God made an atonement for healing when there was no atonement yet. That's right. See? God made it in the face of ever difficult. God will make a way of escape. Hey. He will do it. If you'll just have faith and believe him. Now, of course, they were way out there. Moses, perhaps, was a physician. He was taught in all the, the wisdom of the Egyptians and perhaps knowed many remedies for snake bites. But this time... The remedies that he had, uh, the wisdom of the Egyptians, would not work because the reason there was a... Uh, the people had been uh, disputing with Moses and disputing... said, why did you bring us up out of the wilderness? Just uh, complaining all the time. And it brought sin. And sickness is a direct or indirect cause by sin. Before we had any sin, we had no sickness. So first... Sickness is an attribute of sin. Maybe not what you've done, but what you're, you inherited because God promised that it would go even to the third and fourth generation, that he would visit sickness because of the parent's uh, disobedience to him. Now, there's sometimes a good doctor. If you go to a doctor, and if he's a good doctor, you say, Doctor, i got a headache. Now, if he's interested in his patient, he won't say, Oh, well, take an aspirin and go home. He won't do that. He's going to find first, he's going to diagnose that case till he finds just exactly where the cause is, see? There's something causing that headache. 
Maybe an aspirin would take care of it. I, I wouldn't know. But if he's a good doctor, he just wouldn't brush you off like that. He'd do the best that he could for you. And now, if uh, he'd say, well, perhaps you've got appendicitis, we'll just operate on you. Well, now, without diagnosing the case, that would still be uh, unethical. See, he's, he's got to first find the cause. Well, now, that's the way it is in God. In these meetings, and the reason that I go slow with the patient is the first thing, there's something called that sickness. And before you can get rid of the sickness, if the doctor can do nothing for you, then you've got to find the cause, the reason for that. So there's many times, and you who attend the meeting, understand how the Holy Spirit will reveal to the people hidden sin and so forth that they, they've done long years ago, or maybe something that they ought not have done or something they ought to have done and did not do. And you watch it on the platform. Now, that is God sending his Spirit down to reveal the secrets of the hearts of people. When Jesus Christ was here, that was his ministry. When he found a woman who was really thirsting for the water of life. you believe that? St. John, the fourth chapter. And Jesus carried a conversation with her. He said, she was a Samaritan, not a Jew. And she said, bring me a drink of water. And she quickly, he just wanted a conversation with her. She said, why, it's not customary if you ask such as that. You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. He said, well, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. Well, quickly, she wanted the water. He said, go get your husband. Now, see what he did? The first thing, he, he went right straight to the reason that she couldn't drink this water, you see. Before she could have this water, there was a reason here. She said, I don't have any. He said, that's right, she got five. And the one you're living with now is not your husband. In other words, it's a common law wife. Why? She said, I perceive that you're a prophet. And now... She said, Messiah cometh, and we know that when he comes, he'll tell us all things. And he said, I am him. I'm the one that you're speaking to. I'm the Messiah, in other words. And so she went into the city, and not only was she forgiven of her own sins, but she caused a great multitude of people to believe on Jesus when he spoke to them. And then when Philip went down to preach to him after the Holy Ghost came, Jesus never performed one miracle according to the Scriptures as we had while he was in Samaria. Samaria. He just went down there and told them about the kingdom of God. And they said to the woman, Now we believe ourselves, because we've heard him talk. He's different from other people. And we know that this is the very Messiah. And so then, after Philip went down and preached to them, Jesus had done placed the message out. Then they probably had a, a time among themselves and saying, We know Messiah's on earth, and everything's going to be all right now. And then Philip goes down to preach to them. And then's when the healing's taking place. Great signs and wonders taking place. Then down come James or John and, and Peter and baptize them into the, the body of believers. And the Holy Ghost came up on them, and there went the church from there on. See how God works the thing? He diagnoses the case, gets rid of everything, and then comes right down and lives into man himself. Now that's what God wants to do here tonight. He wants to get rid of, of all the sin that's in this, in this group. If there's sin in here, I pray there's not one. But if there is, and you, what is sin, Brother Branham? Well, today I tell you, I lost my temper. Now, wait just a moment. Sin is unbelief. Now, that's what sin is. There's no other sin but unbelief. It's not a sin to do uh, things like drinking and, and smoking and gambling and, and prostitution. That's not sin. That's, that's the result of sin. That the reason you do that is because you are an unbeliever. See, that's the attributes of sin. Now, if you believe, you want, Jesus said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him and sent me has everlasting life yes. because he's believed. Now, if you believe, you don't do those things. You can't make a, a, grain, you can't make a wheat stalk become a, a cockleburr, could you? No, sir, there's no way of doing it. It's just the life in it is wheat, so it produces wheat. And if you're born to the Spirit of God, you'll, you're a Christian, and you can't do nothing but bear Christian fruits. That's all. That's just the whole thing. And then, if you, of course, if you bear other fruits, Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. Is that right? Not by their acts, not by what this or that, but by their fruit. Now, the, the wheat, if you say, I put wheat in that field, and I go out there and don't see any fruit of wheat, well, I, I kind of doubt you a little bit. <laughs> see, but if you say, well, I put wheat in that field, it's producing wheat, well, that's right. You're right. The, the fruits of it proves that that's what you got in the field is wheat. And then, unbelief. Unbelief is uh, the only thing that can keep you from the kingdom of God. The only thing that is sin is unbelief. Well, now, you say, well, Brother Branham, I quit uh, drinking and I quit uh, doing these things in my evil ways. Well, you did that 
for one purpose. See, the, the only thing it calls you to do that is because you become a believer. See? Now, you would say, well, I'm not a believer, but I just quit that, then you're not a Christian. See? You're not a Christian yet, no matter how moral you are. You just might keep all the Ten Commandments and, and do all the morals and everything and be an unbeliever. You're still not a Christian. You're still dead. You're just as bad off as, as in the sight of God as it comes to coming into the kingdom. Now, I believe that every man, whether he's a sinner or not, he should be a moral. I'm not trying to take away the morals, but I'm saying that a man that really is uh, tries to say, well, I, it'll soon be New Year's. People will be saying, I'm turning a new page. Well, that don't do no good. Why don't you turn one up there? <laughs> that, that's not get a page, but get a book. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Change books. And, and then God will, will take care of you from then on. Then his Holy Spirit will come into us, and we then are his representatives. Then we cannot bear nothing but the Christian fruits if we are dominated by the Christian spirit. Is that right? The Christian spirit is the Christ spirit. Then Jesus said, the things that I do shall you do also. Is that right? The same things that I do, you'll do all, even greater, for I'll go to my Father. Now, I said a little while, and the world won't see me no more. That's the unbeliever, see, the cosmos, the world order, will see me no more. Yet you'll see me, the believer, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Now, the attributes of that one perfect Christian life would be in a group of people and would live till the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe I have told you my conception of God what God is. Listen to this. I believe that God has always been to me the triune God, thrice holy person of God, is just like a three-foot rule. Now, the first 12 inches is God the Father, second 12 inches, God the Son, the third 12 inches, the three foot, the rule complete, God the Holy Spirit. Now, it's not we, none of us believe in, in three different, say there's one God the Father and another younger fellow God the Son and another man God the Holy Ghost, that, that's to be, uh, that would be heathen. It's not. It's only one God and three different dispensations. Now God, when he settled over Mount Sinai that morning and Moses wrote, was up there to get the commandments, he was, he was in the pillar of fire. Anyone knows that that was God the Father. Anyone knows that was. As the angel of a covenant. And the angel of the covenant was Jesus Christ. Is that right? What the Bible said. Now there he is in a pillar of fire. No one could touch him. He's holy. No one can come near him. No, sir. And when he sat alone that mountain to take his own finger and write those commandments that Moses had put in the ark, the lightning was flashing, the thunders were roaring, and the quake was so great that even Moses himself dreaded it. And the people said, Don't let God speak lest we die. Let Moses speak to us and not God. And even if a beast touched that mountain, it had to be thrust through with a dart. Is that right? It had to be killed, nothing, because that was holy God up here above. Now watch the love of God, and that ought to make you start praying for a revival. God condensing, coming down, unfolding himself. Then God appeared there in the pillar of fire. Then the next time he appeared in a visible form was when he appeared in his son, Christ Jesus. He overshadowed a virgin created a blood cell in her womb that brought forth the Son of God. And God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Is that right? Jesus said, It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. See, not me. I only do. They asked him when he passed by them cripples and so forth down there that day, and he only healed one man with prostate trouble or something. He said, he said Well, why didn't you uh, maybe heal the rest of them? Like they said today, Oh, you, you. Just let uh, him heal this one. Let him heal that one, and I'll believe it, see? Well, then, the same critics live today. He said, I do nothing except the Father shows me first, then I, then I do what he tells me. Now, the Father's in me, and what he tells me, that I do. Now, that was God on earth. The Bible said that he should be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. Is that right? Now, now there is God has... A, a condensing of God coming down now. He's in the form of man. Now watch, he's just a little closer to man. Now, he had to give that blood, which was unadulterated blood, not by sex, virgin born. And he gave that blood to cleanse the heart of sexual born men and women, you and I. And he cleansed us from our sins that God himself might come in the third person now and live in the human heart. God's so in love with his creatures. Oh, 
when I think of that, my heart melts. How could that great Jehovah, who stood there and created the universe, who made all things, go out here to Mount Palmer, look through that observatory there and see 120 million years of light space through that, out there at the worlds and, and the solar systems out a uh, solar system out there, how the worlds and the other suns and moons and worlds and stars, and 120 million years of light space. And then beyond that, still more worlds and moons and stars. And that Jehovah God that created all those things brought himself down to live in the heart of you and I. Before he did, he had to clean his road. He had to show him law and commandment. Then he had to come down and show him love and then break his way right into the heart of man. And now God is in us. That's right. Now, we are his hands on earth. We are his eyes on earth. We are his gospel on earth. And the gospel is not altogether but the word. The word made manifest is the gospel. The gospel come not in word only, but through power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Go into all the world and demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit to all nations. Now, instead of that, we begin to teach theology. And we've had 2,000 years, and two-thirds of the earth has never heard of Jesus Christ. Two-thirds of the earth don't know one thing about Jesus Christ. Think of it. Well, you say, that's over in heathen land. That's almost in the United States of America. A little city of New Albany, Indiana, where, just below where I live, a census was taken about three or four months ago, and we find out that in that city, I believe, of 27,000 people, there's over a... I believe it's a third or a fourth of them that doesn't even go to church, belong to any church, or has never darkened a church door. And I heard analysis of Boston, how many children uh, t- on the juvenile delinquency, Captain Al Farrar is a personal friend of mine, which is the head of the FBI, on, he was received the Holy Ghost in my meeting when he'd been following me for two years to catch up with me, see if what I was doing. He walked to that great Dallas, uh, that great meeting that night and stood there and said, I want you, you know my business is to break up racket." He said, I followed him for two years, and he said, this is not a racket. He said, this is the power of Almighty God. And the next day, down in a shooting gallery where he had taken me to, he said, Brother Branham, dismissed his car, walked into the place and said, I want to receive the Holy Ghost right here, and I want to be born again. That's it. Well, he retires now in about another year, and he wants to go with me on the meetings. Now, that's the uh, juvenile. See, of, uh, now, he's, and all, all these, uh, this uh, uh, juvenile, when we come to find out The children by the thousands and tens of thousands has never been in church, knows nothing about God, only just in a curse word. That's about all we know about. Now, see, that's not over in some heathen land. That's in the United States. And now, I'll say this before closing. I believe that what if God, when God gave them the master key back there in the beginning, when he gave them power, said, go demonstrate this power to all the world, I'll be with you in you. And you go and, and that first church, my, how they tore the world up and and the, Christi- the world was almost Christianized in one decade, there, one round of disciples. Then they all left it. The next round began to organize. The third round, the round about through the Dark Ages, then the Catholic Church was formed. And then from there, they began theology, and out come Martin Luther, John Wesley, and Calvin Knox, and all coming out. And everything has been based solely upon theology. Yes. That's right. And they failed to get back there. Yes. The very thing that the God told them, not to do. They're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. Not educate the world, but preach the gospel and demonstrate the power of God. See? Now, and today in our churches, just start it in the church and find out what happens. They show you the door. See? And the very master key is the thing, is what they have left, the cornerstone. When the builders back there begin to build the building, it was cut out in all the world. Now, you'll see why I'm interdenominational. They cut you masons here and so forth and ones of you and know the order, how they cut out the stones and hauled them to Joppa and so forth and by ox cart taking them on down the tall cedars of Lebanon and how they cut it and so forth and brought it down. But when it was all piled together outside of Jerusalem, there wasn't a buzz of a saw or a sound of a hammer for the space of 40 years. Now here come a stone cut this way and one cut this way and one cut this way and one that way. But they found that every stone just slipped right to its place. That's what I think about believers in God. Every one of us has a place in this building. We may not just be like the other one, but we got a place to place here, every born-again Christian. Now, the builders, when they begin to go on, they run into a funny-looking stone. They said, we can't use that. That stone's no good. It's a freak stone. And they kicked it off over in a weed pile somewhere and sold it away. And they went on building on their building and building on their building. 
and come to find out they got to a certain place and they couldn't get any farther. They had come to a halt and they couldn't go any farther. And the very stone that they had thrown away was the chief cornerstone. And that's where it is today, brother, sister. We've taken theology, we've taken schooling, we've taken education. Education is wonderful, but it's been the greatest hindrance the gospel has ever had. That's right, is education. I, I'm not saying that to want you to be ignorant or something. You don't have to be ignorant. But, brother, the people have put everything on education, theology, and look what they've done. They, have, they can't produce one evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There are no more than Mohammedans. Or, the Mohammedans walk face to face with you and challenge the thing. You're not long ago, Dr. Reedhead received the baptism of the Holy Ghost of the Sudan mission. A wonderful man stood in my house and he said, Brother Bram, he had degree after degree after degree. He said, but has the teachers been wrong? He said, I've been in and see them throw the furniture and so forth and all this and the meetings, what they call the holy rollers and so forth. He said, but what I'm trying to think of, all of this that I've seen and, and all the degrees I've got, he said, my heart's hungering for God. And there you are. In the highest rank, and fundamentalism. Now my heart's hungry for God. He said, is there such a thing as receiving the Holy Ghost after you believe? That's right. That's right. See? And look at, at Buddha. Buddha died 2,300 years ago, the great religious of, of China. And when he died, here was the things he said before he died. He said, it will come to pass before the world shall end that the God of love the God of love, now that's a God of dictator, you know, said the God of love will send his servants, his prophets in here, and they'll come by a way that they won't leave a track behind them by airplanes. See, see they, they, had a, they had enough tinge in it, but having the form and denying there, see, it's, it's the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing. Now, and this Mohammed standing talking to, to Dr. Reedhead, he said, if, he said, he said, why don't you reject your dead prophet, Muhammad, and receive a resurrected Lord Jesus that we have? And the Muhammad, smart, shrewd, he said, kind sir, what could your resurrected Lord Jesus do any more for me than what my dead prophet does? Right. He said, well, you see, we have the consolation. He said, eh, he said, so do we. He said, well, we have joy and happiness. He said, so do we. What do you have joy and happiness about? said, well, we, he's coming back again. said, so is our prophet. And said, your prophet, Jesus, promised you life after death. Our prophet, Muhammad, promised us the same thing. Life after death. So we're happy about it. And said, you just produced one thing with your Lord Jesus that I can't produce with my dead prophet now. said, you just show me one thing that you got that we haven't got. So don't come preaching that to me. Said. And the man's right. And then he turned to Dr. Reedhead. He said, listen, sir. You people who said that Jesus rose from the dead, said when Jesus rose from the dead, if he did, let's, and he said the things that I do, will you also? And he promised great signs for the believers and the new teachers. He said, let me see you all do the signs that he promised that he would do, then I'll believe he raised from the dead. He said, oh, well, we're preaching the gospel all the world. He said, so are we. He said, let, let me see him produce. He said, let me tell you something. He said, you all have had 2,000 years. And yet we got the greatest religion there is. That's right. There's more Mohammeds. Christianity is about third. See? Mohammed's the greatest numbers of religion in the world. See? He said, and two-thirds of the world don't know nothing about your resurrected Lord Jesus. He said, let our Mohammed rise from the dead. He said, the whole world will know about it. That's right. Now, Dr. Reedhead said he was defeated, and he was, and that's what got him hungering after God. And brother and sister, I'm here to say tonight that Lord Jesus Christ raised from the dead. He lives among us today and does the same things and produces just exactly what he said he would do. He's the same resurrected Lord Jesus. If he, if he will, and it's only by his sovereign grace, not by me, I'm his servant, like the... Uh, the, any person sitting here, like the, the little boy that's a Christian, or the little girl, or the, or the anybody, I don't care who it is. No matter, there's no great people in, 
and little people in the kingdom of God. We're all in the kingdom of God by God's grace. That's all. There's none great and none little. And we're just all brothers and sisters. That's right. Somebody has this office and somebody has that office, but it's, I was reading where, I believe it was Charles G. Finney, one of the greatest uh, evangelists of the day, and a converted lawyer. And when he, there's an old man dying with TB, and before he died, he laid on his face crying and praying, and he raised up and he said, well, I was able to pray the prayer of faith for a certain city. God's going to give a revival in that city. And he marched down about 30 different cities. And after the man is dead and gone, Finney come by to his widow and picked up those cities, and those revivals come just exactly the way that man said. Why? Because one agonizing soul, one soul before God in sincerity, done more to bring a revival than all the schools there was in the world. Right. One soul prayed through. Any of you will tell you the great Eastern revival of many years ago when in Africa when those hot and tops and so forth over there, when they had a revival, the very, the very reason of it never come from their teaching in their big schools was one poor, illiterate, unlearned, colored man back in a little old haunt back there, laid on his face day and night in the dust and prayed till God sent a revival that swept all eastern or uh, northern Africa in the kingdom of God. And they had a revival there. My, what a revival. But what ruined them? Then the teachers came down from uh, England in different ways and began to set up in there and begin to teach theology and get away from the power of God and things like that, and then the whole thing went into chaos. And that's just exactly what's happened in the United States of America. And brother, let's get back to God, to the living God, the resurrected one, the one who's loved, the one who respects no denominations and respects them all in another way, the one who loves every creature of his on the earth and is wanting to come down and has done everything he can to work his way down into the hearts of man. He's provided a way like the brass serpent. He provided Jesus to meet all that we have need for while we're in this journey between heaven and earth. That's He provided Jesus Christ, and he's God's all-sufficient sacrifice. Everything you have need of tonight is not in your church. It's in Christ. There it is. It's not in your education. It's not in your theology, what your creed is, what your... It's in Jesus Christ. Look to him with simple, humble, loving faith and say, God, cleanse me from all selfishness and take all impurities from me and let me from this day be holy thine. See what God will do for you. May he bless you is my prayer while we bow our heads. Our kind heavenly Father, I pray for this great city tonight first looking upon it as uh, the overall panoramic uh, view of it and its uh, whole metropolitan area and seeing the night how sin I'm thinking of Sodom when angels came down to find out if that was true and we know that we're near something I pray for Chicago God and believing it little meetings such as gathered around over the city of true believers as the only thing is keeping the wrath of God and judgment from being poured out right now. I think of our president across there in that meeting now and to the nation of Russia and knowing that they have the very weapon that would blow this place till there wouldn't be hardly life left on it again and could do it before day dawns in the morning. Then, God, I think, what keeps them from doing it? Because there's some righteous people yet praying. Oh, God, have mercy, I pray, Father. Have mercy. Grant tonight in this lovely little church sitting here as a lighthouse, a group of people who surrender their hearts, lives, everything they've got, willingly walk out just now and give their life freely for the cause. Believe you. Oh, Father, I pray that you'll endue them with great power tonight, great power of faith. May ever thought be moved from their mind or from their subconscious that would be contrary to your divine plan tonight. Take it away, Father. Be with us now. 
Help thou me, Lord, unworthy, standing here as a mortal, knowing that someday I've got to face you, give an account for every word I say and every thought goes through my mind. And I pray, God, that you'll cleanse me and keep me in thy hand, that, that you might let me speak to my fellow man. I love them, Lord, and I want to see them all come in the great unity of God and, and be, uh, be brought into the great a millennium that's a coming soon. I pray for everyone. And I bless these sick that's here tonight, Father. There's many sitting here sick. And I, I know that you said when you were here on earth the things that you would do would be done by your believers. And now may you send him tonight, O oh God, and may he come in his power and unfold himself into the great uh, audience here and into the heart of every believer and may he manifest his being by signs and wonders that when we leave from here tonight, may there not be one person here but want to go home well. Grant it, Lord. Let the faith just meet that condition, and it will be, for thou hast said, as thou hast believed in thine heart, so shall it be. And I pray that you'll grant that tonight. And make the whole atmosphere here, Lord, a creative atmosphere of, of one soul, one mind, one accord, one purpose. Grant it, Lord. Hear my prayer. I, I pray this, that you'll grant it to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son, amen. My heart so hungers to see that atmosphere. See, the atmosphere is what brings it. See, the atmosphere would bring... If every person here would get in one perfect harmony, it would be settled. See, like the natural way to, for an egg to hatch is put it under the hen, and it'll hatch because it's the atmosphere, it's warm. But you just wrap it in a, a blanket, keep it warm, it'll hatch anyhow. Put it in an incubator, it'll hatch anyhow. See, it's the atmosphere that brings forth the results. And if we can just get all the doubt away from us now, push everything out of the way. Now, there's dying people here, no doubt. Some of them with heart trouble or something, and a heart trouble is one thing we haven't found to do much with yet. So let's just pray God and be in one accord and say, Heavenly Father, now just let that glorious atmosphere just settle down and the Holy Spirit will come right in and just do marvelous things for us. May he grant it. Now, uh, we got some prayer cards. We line the people up by their prayer cards. And... We, uh, uh, on one side, it's got a, uh, your address and so forth, and on the other side, it's got a number. And he told me where that coming up, where, what? F, F, prayer card F. Um, that, I'm sorry, I forgot that, but prayer card F. And um, let's, we can't get too many, how we bring them, brother, uh, bring them to here, all right, all right. Let's uh, line up about, the first about 10 or 15. I don't see any crippled people around anywhere that would have to needly be packed. But let's line up about the first 10. F1. Who's got prayer card F1? 1. Prayer card 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Line them up first now. 10. All right. 11. I'm no healer. I, I'm your brother. See, God is your healer. See, I just pray for the sick. But God set some in the church first apostles, then prophets, then teachers, then evangelists. See, then gifts of healing, then miracles, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. All those gifts, according to the scripture, was set in for the perfecting of the church. Is that right? Now, God put them in there. Just like if he made a human being with an ear, he doesn't tend human beings not to have any ear to be deaf. He made man with mouth. He never will make man without mouth, nose, so forth. That's the members of the body. And just as sure as my hand was, God made my hand to be my hand, God put some in the church to be gifts of healing. That's prayer, faith, of course. Some of them in there to be teachers and evangelists. 
Now, what we've done, we've took all the rest of the body away and just said, no, teachers and evangelists, that's all there is, see? Teachers and evangelists. We fail to see there's prophets. We fail to see there's apostles. We fail to see there's gifts of healing, speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, working of miracles. See? Those things going just the same as my eyes. No, didn't Paul say that? First Corinthians? See, they're all going the body. Now, these gifts are, you're born in the world with them. They come by the sovereignty of God. Now, it was my part in this world to see vision. And I've heard people try to say it was a prophetic or so forth, and I've heard people say under the inspiration, it speak it that way, but it's a, a subconscious. It's just as I've explained it to you before, you couldn't dream a dream unless somebody made you dream the dream. God had to do it. In your subconscious, someone don't dream dreams. He can't help it. He never gets back to his subconscious. But your subconscious, when you dream, you're somewhere, you remember. Do you remember dreams you dreamed years ago? Well, wh what part of you was where when you dream that it makes it you still remember it, see? There's some part of you somewhere. Now, a seer, a prophet, their subconscious is not back there, neither is it here. It's right here. You don't go to sleep. You just break from one to another. Now, Jesus Christ did that same thing when he was here on earth. Is that right? That's right. He looked out and perceived their thoughts in the audience. Is that right? Yes. Philip come to him. He said, why, there's a man. It's a good, in other words, we'd say today a Christian, a believer. He said, when did you know me, rabbi or reverend, teacher? He said before, uh, he told Nathaniel, said before Philip called you, you were under a tree. I saw you. He said, you're the son of God, the king of Israel. Is that right? Now, Jesus said, these things you'll do also. Now, Jesus said, I don't do any healing now. I only do what my Father says do, what he shows me that I do. Now, he's raising the dead, living in his church, and just as the Father... Now, do you get the, you get the running of the setting of the Scripture? Look, just as the Father will... Now, here's a lady standing here. As far as I know, I've never seen her in my life. She's perfectly stranger to me. And I, I know two or three here in the audience. I believe this is Brother Moore's sister sitting right here. I recognize her, and I believe Brother Beeler was... Right here, I seen him a while ago, and there's Brother John Ryan, and I believe that's Sister Ryan sitting there. And as far as I know, my wife's in here somewhere, but I don't even know. I haven't seen her yet. I guess. Uh, but uh, that's the only people that I see that I know in the building. Let's Brother Jose here. Now, as far as I know, that's the only people that. Are... Yes, I do see the brother, sister. Um, Sims from Zion City. Uh, there, uh, see, uh, that's Joyce next, uh, and Brother Sims over here. Now, I mean, as far as I know, that's uh, all that I, I know and, and see. No, I believe I see Dr. Lee sitting back there. Was this in the meeting? Brother Lee, that's the first time I've seen you. God bless you. Have you met him, Brother Bose? Dr. Lee, would you stand up just to be recognized? <laughs> One of the Baptist brothers who just had service with down in Miami, Florida, where he just closed a wonderful campaign down there. All right. I was looking for my wife. Where are you, honey? Raise up your hand. I got, I'm curious right now. Uh, oh, yes. All right, yes. <laughs> I just happen to get it on my mind, and I don't want, you can't have other things on your mind. You've got to be certainly, perfectly normal and uh, before God. All right. Now, once she's little and way back in the corner, no wonder I couldn't see her. <laughs> All right. Now, you be in prayer, and you, you, you pray. And now, I want to ask each one of you something. Uh, let's start with this lady right here. We're strangers, are we, lady? We, we don't know one another. All right. Now, here's a strange lady. Now, let's just take our time now. This is Saturday, tomorrow. You don't have to get up until you go to Sunday school. Now, this, this lady here, what if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had not been crucified and glorified and sitting at the right hand of His Majesty of Heaven? What if He was standing here now with this suit that the people gave me in Norway? What if, if He was standing here with this suit on? Looking at this woman here. Now, the only thing he could do, now as far as healing her, if she's sick, I don't know. 
God knows. And what's wrong with her? He, she couldn't hide her life from Jesus Christ if she had to, if God would reveal to Jesus what her trouble was. Is that right? He, he, but if God wouldn't reveal, Jesus wouldn't know. Is that right? He only does what the Father shows. Remember they put a rag over his face and hit him on the head and said, Now if you're a prophet, prophesy and tell us who hits him. And soldier. He never opened his mouth. Herod said, Come do some kind of a miracle. Let me see you do it. He didn't clown for people. He just did as the Father said do. Now if he were standing here, as far as her healing, her sickness, how many believe that Jesus Christ healed her when he died for her 1,900 years ago? Well, that shows you've been taught the gospel. And if she's a sinner, Christ saved her when he died 1,900 years ago. Is that right? Now, he don't come down and save you now. You just accept your salvation, what he's already done. You accept your healing, what he's already done. So then what would he do? He would try to do something to make her faith come up to a place that she could accept her healing. Is that right? Is that scriptural? Is it sensible? Is it the Bible? Well, God bless you. Now, I pray to him, and may the angel of God who came to me when I was, my mother said when I was perhaps maybe three minutes old, the light stood over. And the first thing I can remember in my life almost was a vision. And it's been with me since then. And if I have to stand before God, before this service is over, to give an account of my life, God who looks down now knows that it's truth, that he showed visions, the light, when he comes down, they took a picture of it. You many of you have seen it in Washington, D.C., in the Hall of Religious Art. And may he tonight give grace, and may he help me, as he knows my heart, is to help you to see his Son, Christ Jesus, and by his Spirit, and by his Word, and by the anointing which is on me now, I take every soul in here and my Jewish diction in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to come here, lady. Now, I just want to speak to you just a few moments, just in order. See, we're two human beings, and you have a soul. I have a soul. And we both got to meet God someday to give an account of our life. And, and it's going to be... I want all that I can for good. Don't you do too, don't you? Yeah. Sure you do. Now, if we are strangers, and whatever is wrong with you, if God will reveal it to me standing here, would that give you uh, this much to believe that that I have told the truth, that I am representing Him right? Yeah. If we have never seen one another before, and if I can do that, by the, then you'll know that there's some spirit, some power of some sort here that knows your life. And I'm a Christian, believe God, have received the Holy Spirit, and you will accept your healing then if God will reveal that. That would be just the same spirit that when Philip comes, or like uh, you being a colored lady, me a white man. That's exactly the same way it was in that day when that uh, woman come, the Samaritan, come to Jesus. And she said, uh, he said, bring me a drink. Well, they had race segregations then like they do now, you see. Why, she said, it's not customary for you, a Jew, to ask me a Samaritan such. Why, he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, she was talking to the one that didn't have any difference, you see. Made all one, you see. And said, if you would... And she said, then he went right straight and found where her trouble was. And as a, a, he, he wanted her, yet she was in a horrible sin, but he wanted her to be a believer, to be well. Now, he's the same Lord Jesus now, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. He's the same Lord Jesus. Now, um, you're, you're not here for yourself at all. No. Okay. You're, you're for, here for a man that's in a hospital, and he's, he, he's, he's very seriously, he's got... I believe uh, there's some doctors right at that side now. And it's, it's TB. And the man has TB. And it's your husband. Isn't that right? Yes. You stand in his place. Yes. And now, Father God, may this, our sister who stands here for her husband, may 
the Holy Spirit, which is there at his bedside now. And when she sees him, may he witness that something happened just at this hour. And may he get well and go home. For I ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sister. You, may the Lord add his blessings. Do you believe on our Lord Jesus Christ? Now, may he send his great, omnipotent, blessed, holy power. I, may he send his blessings to everyone. Every person in here should believe at this time. They, they should have faith. There's just one moment. Um, you're weeping sitting there, lady. It's that little high hat like all the colored lady. What's a oh you you've uh, you got a, a loved one too that's sick. It's a it's a man, I believe a father. Is that right? He has he just had an operation or something or a, a prostate operation, is that right? When you go, lay your hands on him, and may he be healed in Jesus Christ's name. God bless you. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. Don't doubt. Just believe. Now, how do you do, sir? Uh, perhaps that we are strangers one to another. I, I have never seen you in this life. But our Lord Jesus Christ has fed us both, hasn't he? And has made us... Uh, what we are today. It's all by his sovereign grace. And now you and I, being strangers, sir, and we have never met in life, never known each other, and here you walk up here on the platform. Well, there's something that's here. You, if he will only give me grace and his power. See, the Spirit of God has to be represented in something. It wasn't a pillar of fire and it was Oh, it was on some water one time, and the people would step into it and be healed and, and so forth. It has to be represented in something. And it was represented as a dove one time coming down. And it was represented in Jesus Christ. And he promised it to be represented in the believers throughout all the world until he come again. Now, then he, in his loving mercy, has set in the church different things for different purposes to make the church. And then here you and I come as two men and perhaps uh, never seen one another. If I don't remember if I've ever seen you. I suppose I haven't. And if you've ever seen me, of course, I wouldn't know that. And you might have been to meetings or something you've seen. You have been to meetings before. Well, I know one thing, that you are a believer. You, you, you are a believer. And uh, not only that, but you're a preacher. That's right. And uh, isn't that the truth? Amen. Yes, sir. And aren't you, uh, you something about little, uh, some women, a little hat, it's a uh, Mennonite, you're a Mennonite preacher. Is that true? Amen. Yes, sir, yes, sir. it is. And uh, you come from out of town. I you come from uh, uh, Owie, Owie City. Is that right? That's right. And you suffer with, uh, you've got uh, a hernia, and you have uh, uh, also rectal trouble. Isn't that true? You believe me as God's prophet? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Now, Lord, as your spirit is on your servant to reveal such things, then with my hands, according to the Bible, I lay my hands while the spirit has my body charged, and I lay it upon my brother for the healing of his body. And may the evils of sickness and affliction leave my brother, for I say to them, Turn him loose. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you go out of my brother, that he be well. Amen. God's blessings upon you, brother. Go and be well now. Let's be in prayer and believe God with all your heart. Now, try to, to watch, try to be reverent, and keep praying. If you believe with all your heart, God will Make you well. Don't you believe that? Just a moment, sir. Brother? 
Now, he's some, just, just wait just, just, just a moment. There's a sympathetic... Almighty God who knows all things, reveals all things, makes all things right. I, I believe you're healed. See, there's but some... No, it's... On that lady sitting there. You have rectal trouble too, don't you, lady? Isn't that right? Had a strange feeling when it went, that man went by there, didn't you? That's when you were healed too. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. If you're going to be. God bless you, just go. Now be reverent. See, you out there, you don't have to be on the platform. See, these people who have is lined up here just merely for the Holy Spirit to be moving. See, you just believe out there with all your heart. God will take care of the rest if you just have faith with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Now, how do you do, this, uh, lady? Do you believe me to be uh, God's servant? And the reason I say that, Peter and John, you know, they passed through the gate called Beautiful. They said, look on us. And they gave heed. And the angel of the Lord told me, said, if you get the people to believe you. And it's like if the preacher here would say, do you believe that I'm a... I'm a pastor sent from God. Yes, pastor, I believe that. Now, I can help you. But if you didn't believe him to be God's pastor, well, he couldn't help you, you see. You have to believe. That's God's key is faith. That's the only thing we'll unlock. And that faith comes from here, from here, and from there. What he says comes in here, believes it here, it brings the results. Your... I suppose we're strangers to one another. As far as I know, I've never seen you in my life, but you are. You've been having trouble with your head, haven't you? A roaring feeling. Isn't that right? I've seen a young woman standing by you just now. It was, it's it's uh, something I thought was, there's a girl sitting here praying. I, a young woman, I I thought it, but I looked at it. it, it oh, yeah, see now, here she is. It's your daughter. And you're, you're worried. Oh, yes, it's a divorce case between her and her husband. And there's two little children in that, isn't there? That's right, there's two little children. It's a divorce case. And then your your husband is standing there, too. He's trying to do something. He's trying to get rid of... Oh, he's an alcoholic. He's trying to... Become, is that right? Get rid of it and become a Christian. Oh, Father, I pray for mercy that you will be so kind as to grant our request tonight to thee that my sister's troubles will leave tonight and may she be granted everything that she's asked for. Oh, merciful Father. don't know one another. But God knows us. Keep believing, sister. And all the pain will leave. Do you believe me to be God's servant? Uh, I believe that. You don't live in this city, do you? You come from Illinois. Is that true? Right. I'd say you come from something like Freeport, Illinois. Is that right? You love the Lord Jesus? Your husband's name James? Whitcoff or something? Like that. That's right. Now. You're very sick. But it's 
in the bone. This tumor, the doctor said, I believe, in the bone. Is that right? Sure. Ain't nothing can be done for you, only God. You accept your healing? I do. Do you believe now the Holy Spirit, which is here, who knows all things, who speaks all things? If I ask our Heavenly Father while this anointing is here to curse that thing, that the doctor would find you as well? Come here. Merciful Father, I pray for divine deliverance from my sister. May she be given deliverance tonight from this horrible disease. Your servants, the doctors, can do nothing about this now, but thou can do it, Lord. And as you now have promised to be in us and said that we, if we be in your image, made in your likeness, you was a creator. And by your great power, you created things. And no one could do things like you. But you give us the Spirit by measure, him the Spirit without measure. And then if you here who can create vision and bring it to pass by this heavenly atmosphere of the Holy Ghost that's here present now, I also, as God's servant, ask for a recreation of this bone structure. And may the tumor in this bone go out just now as I lay my hands upon the woman acting in a representative way of the Son of God. Cursed be the disease, and may the Creator bring forth and produce to this our sister a healthy body. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, sister, now don't you fear. Just go on and you write me your testimony. Come on. God bless you. All right. Do you think a heart trouble left you while you were sitting there? Do you believe that God's going to make you well? I believe so. You do? Yeah. Come here. Almighty God, may thy blessings rest upon this man, knowing that Satan would send him to a premature grave if he could. Now, I curse this horrible affliction. And as you, the Creator, standing here, can create, may he be healed in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Go. God bless you. Your attitude is enough to bring the healing. God bless you. There you are. It's your attitude. If you can believe. I have something you remember I'm telling you now. That this is only a shadow of what's fixing to happen. You believe me, I'm saying it to uh, the Spirit of God. I have felt it for the last few years. And a few nights ago, I've seen it come to pass. And there's something going to take place. And God will heal. All right, come, sister, and let's... Ask God to get rid of that tumor so you can eat. Oh, oh God, Amazing. creator of heavens and of earth, I lay my hands upon this, our sister. And Heavenly Father, I've tried with all my heart to represent you to this people. And I now, you here who can create vision, create spirit, make life, and we only live and move by your power. And I ask thee, Heavenly Father, at this time to receive the prayer of your unprofitable servant to this dying woman. And Satan has done this evil to put this tumor in her stomach, but thou art here to remove it. And I curse this tumor. Now, Lord, if your servant has found grace in your sight, may this tumor be dead from right now on. I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ. May it shrink and go away. Amen. God bless you, sister. That's the way to receive healing. Just go and believe and have faith in God. You believe I'd ask him, you get well? Now, I want you to believe with all your heart. All right, now bow your head just a moment. Merciful Father, bring forth 
pity and mercy. Restore to her that which Satan has taken from her. Will you grant it, Lord? In Jesus Christ's name, may this curse leave her. Amen. Now, you can hear me say, now that you can be made well, don't you? Yes. Right. And it's all gone from you. Your eyes going bad, hearing, hearing and all. And you've had an old trouble which has bothered you a long time, lady. But all that has gone from you now. And you can go now and be made well. God bless you. All right. Come. Do you believe with all your heart? You do. If our Heavenly Father will be so kind as to, after sending His Son to die for your healing, and will reincarnate His being again here in His church to reveal to you to reproduce His life again, you surely would accept it, wouldn't you, and be made well? Well, if you believe that, then anemic condition will leave you. You believe it? Then it will leave you. God bless you. May God's peace be with you. Now, Father dear, who has sent Jesus our Lord to heal the sick and the afflicted, I pray for divine mercy that you will help her and heal her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Now go believing with all your heart and be made well. Just have faith in God. God will bring it to pass for you. Now, so what my opinion is, see, it seems to me that everybody in the building should be well right now. Yeah. It does. And it's true. And how? The Spirit still hangs over a lady here, I believe it was blessed a while ago. It's a lady with something on her hat. You still got something on your... Oh, it, you, you're, you're seeking God for a deeper walk, isn't that right? You want a closer walk with God, isn't that right? That's what you're thinking about. Say, lady, you're a real believer. If you just can't, just go on now. God bless you. You'll receive that. You believe the heart troubles go go away from you. You're going to get well. You believe I'll bless you in His name that it will come to pass. Father, to this poor mother, I pray in Jesus' name. Now she stands here tonight and suffering with the most horrible thing, and we can have killed more of our people. And I pray for mercy. And God, I'm thinking about when going up the hill and that cross laying on your back and rubbing and the blood coming, oozing out of your shoulders, your little frail body fell under the load. Simon come along and helped you to bear the cross. Look at his children here tonight. Here's one here, Father, standing here trying to move up into the realm of faith to live a little while longer on the earth here to glorify you. Grant it. And may cursed be the disease of this woman's body as the Holy Spirit is here who can create. May her heart be made new. I ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I just mentioned heart. You had other things. Asthmatic and so forth. It's just the same. God has made it well. All right. Come. Holy Spirit wants to heal. He's just trying to get in the hearts of the people. Um, believe him. All right, lady. I want you to look at me and believe me to be God's servant. You, you do that. Oh, this is an hour that you've longed for for a long time. That's true. Yes. You've longed to see this time. You're suffering. You have a growth in the breast. You have a heart trouble, too, that bothers you. Isn't that right? You're seeking deeper. And, and you... Oh, I see you took a long trip somewhere and you went to a place... It was... You, you, is it my meeting? You've been coming everywhere trying to get into... The, this is the time, isn't it? Yes. Is this it? Come here. Now, God of heaven, who made all things... 
I am here to bless this woman as your representative and to curse the disease of her body. Now thou art the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, and you're here to magnify your being, and you are doing it, Lord, of vindicating that the truth of God's word is being made manifest. And our sister has come humbly, waiting, deep, calling to the deep. And here she stands. She couldn't refrain from tears. Why, this is what she's longed for for the past years. Now she stands. Oh, great heavenly Father, who we are in his presence, cursed be this disease of her body. May it leave her. And may she live and be strong and healthy to serve you. I bless her and curse the disease in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, sister. You have to receive it after being that faithful and believing. How do you do, sister? Now, you are being believer, being thinker, quiet person, suffering with heart trouble. He's going to make you well. And you, you can live. He died that you could live. You believe that? Uh, I want to to bless you in his name. See, my, just as a man, I couldn't, see. But I, I believe that he is witnessing to this audience that I'm telling the truth he sent me for this purpose. And he said, whatever you do on earth here, I'll do the same thing in heaven. And if you loose anyone here on earth, I'll loose it in heaven then if I am representing him truthfully, then he has given the authority of a vindication. In other words, to make it true, not because I said so, but he's here saying it's the truth. Then if I should ask for it to you to be loose to this heart trouble, God would confirm it in heaven. Is that right? And now to obey his word, I lay my hands on yours. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I loose this heart trouble as his representative. And now, Satan, you bound her and trying to take her to the grave, yet aged, but our God doesn't look at age, and I come to serve a warrant on you as a representative of Calvary, as God's agent and you cannot stay in this house any longer. You have to move out because as the Holy Spirit, the detective of God, who share in your secret places are revealed, and you can't hide any longer. And by the power of Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, cursed be the heart trouble of this woman, and may she be loose now. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, go and God peace be on you. Have faith and bow your head just a moment. Oh God brought Jesus from the dead. This deaf woman stands before me, Lord. A deaf spirit living in her. And she wants to be made whole. She wants to do this, Lord, to receive this blessing to glorify you. And now, Lord, as thou hast sent us to go into all the world and to make disciples and to heal the sick, I come representing your vicarious suffering at Calvary. By your stripes we were healed. And this evil thing has come on my sister, and I curse it in the name of Jesus Christ claiming power over it, I say, come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Just whisper as low as I can. Now you're healed. Your hearing's normal. God bless you, my sister. Let us say thanks be to God. What is deafness? It's a spirit. See, it's just like something cutting the power off my hand. And now, the doctor would look at the, the woman, which he has. He told her, tall, thin doctor, wearing glasses, 
said that the nerve in her ears was dead. Well, what killed the nerve? It wasn't killed all over her body. Our brother, the doctor, the only thing that he knows that the nerve wasn't acting from there out. It's acting from here back. She could talk. Both of them work practically, I suppose, on the same nerve, because the same spirit seems to be on about the same thing. But now that nerve wouldn't work. Well, what was it? Now, the doctor could look. If there's a bone pressed against it, it's cutting the energy off so he could operate and move the bone back. But perhaps there's nothing there that he can, any of the senses will declare. He couldn't see it, feel it, or anything. But yet it's dead. Well, what made it die? Now, the Bible said when the death spirit went out of the man, he could hear. See? It's a spirit. See? Just like these other diseases. You watch. Now, standing here in his presence, every disease and everything will leave. But now, if you haven't got faith in God and in your heart here to believe God, he'll come back to you. But you watch that woman that was dead. By a few days, if she don't keep believing God, that same spirit will come right back again. See? But it's in his presence. Now, anything, just right now, if every person in here believed just at one time, everything will happen just right now has to. It's the atmosphere of the thing, see? it all take place right now, see? Oh, if we could just see it enough to believe and have faith, what our Heavenly Father would do, how wonderful. You're praying, Sister of God, would heal you of that spinal trouble sitting there if you just believe and accept with all your heart. You believe you have? You do? Raise up your hand if you accept it. All right. You can go away. Be way well. God bless you. Uh-huh. Just don't doubt. Have faith. What you praying for, sir? You want to get rid of that rheumatism sitting out there at the end? You want to get rid of it? He healed you just then. Stand up. You're well. He's made you well. God bless you now. God's peace upon you. Just believe. Sir, you believe you're healed before you get here? That heart trouble? Right there. Happened right there while you said it. Just go believing. Now, Father, while faith is on the man and he knows he must now accept it, be sure that it leaves him. I curse this devil that would send this man to a premature grave. May it come out of him and never bother him no more. In Jesus Christ's name. Now, my brother, you, uh, of course, you feel different now. See, it's gone from you. Your heart's pumping right again. Now, just keep believing that. Don't accept nothing else. Just keep believing that. Go on. You just live right on. God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. <clears throat> if thou canst believe, he said, all things are possible. Isn't that right? All things are possible to them that believe. If any man, any woman, anywhere that is now willing to accept it and believe it, God is here to perform his, what he said that he would do. Had throat trouble a while, haven't you? That's right. You think he healed you then? He did. <laughs> he made you well. God bless you. God be with you. That bronchial trouble so often. Isn't that right, lady? When she, he has come from, that throat went right back to you. You were healed. God bless you. Why, oh, just healing people everywhere in the building. You were healed that kidney trouble just then, too, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do the rest of you want to be healed now? Let us put our hands on each other. Almighty God, be merciful now. 
and bless and heal. Bless this, our brother. May he go from here and be normally and well, through Jesus' name. And now, Lord, to this audience that's here, lovely, sweet, waiting, and I, hour after hour rolled by, and our lovely Lord Jesus continues with us, blessing us, and making himself manifest to every one of us. I pray for mercy just now, Lord, knowing that every spirit in here, every evil spirit right now is under the power of Almighty God has to come out. Now, while you have your heads bowed, no matter who you are, where you're from, or what's wrong with you, all your evil sicknesses that's bothering your body is now subject to my prayer. My prayer is to God that he heals every one of you. And now, I have told the truth. And our Heavenly Father has testified that I have told you the truth. Jesus Christ is here to make well every one of you, to do it, to fulfill his word, to confirm what he said that he would do and what he did do. And he sent me as his representative. No matter how sick you are, how bad off you are, how weak, no matter what it is, wrong, right now, not in the morning, just now. Jesus Christ makes you well. And now, Satan, I curse thee. Thou spirits of sickness and infirmity, cursed be you. You can't hold these people. God's Holy Spirit has created a faith in here tonight that you cannot stand in its presence. You have to remove, come out of them. I adjure thee, Satan, to leave these people in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God.